Happy belated Halloween, Rooster here. While I was working on a future video, I found something a little bit spooky in the EPA's fuel economy numbers for electric vehicles, and I couldn't quite figure out what was going on. But after some further research, I've since gotten to the bottom of the mystery. In my future video, I'll be driving my Tesla Model 3 all the way up Pikes Peak to see how much battery it uses. But while doing some quick maths, one, that's free, quick maths, trying to see how my efficiency fared versus what the car is rated for, the EPA numbers for efficiency didn't seem to add up. While I'll be examining a Tesla Model 3 in this video, as that's the car that I have, this video will be applicable to any EV on the EPA's fuel economy website. If you're buying an EV, two of the most important numbers to look for is how efficient the vehicle is and how much range does the vehicle have. Efficiency for internal combustion engines is given in miles per gallon or kilometers per liter if you're across the pond. For EVs, it's similar with miles per kilowatt hour or it can be given as the inverse of that, watt hours per mile. I'm not sure which one is more popular, but Jason from Engineering Explained has a great video on why we should use energy per distance. So I'll be using watt hours per mile for this video. I imagine they use watt hours per kilometer pretty much everywhere that's not the United States. So I'll put conversions on the screen for those that don't use the good old proprietary American mile. If you go to the Environmental Protection Agency's website, you'll see that it lists a 2020 long range all wheel drive Tesla Model 3 as using 28 kilowatt hours per 100 miles or 280 watt hours per mile. Also cool to see that Tesla is making their vehicles more and more efficient by requiring less energy to go the same distance with each model year, except for the 22 model. Not sure what happened there. Additionally, because the vehicles are becoming more efficient, that is giving them more range with each model year as well. However, this is not the case with the 2022 model year, but yet it's still somehow received a longer range than the previous year. This leads to the next question of, are these cars getting more range because of the efficiency gains? Or is Tesla also making the battery bigger? Here's where the rabbit hole begins. This is your captain speaking. A quick warning that we will be hitting some mass turbulence shortly. Please keep your seatbelts fastened and I'll do my best to guide us through it. For the 2020 model year, 28 kilowatt hours per 100 miles times 322 miles of range gives us about a 90 kilowatt hour battery. And that actually makes sense if you compare it to other EVs. The Mustang Mach-E extended range rear wheel drive has 88 kilowatt hours. Audi's e-tron GT Quattro has 85 kilowatt hours and Porsche's Taycan Turbo has 84 kilowatt hours. So let's double check how big the battery is in our Tesla Model 3 to confirm these numbers make sense and then we'll just be on our way. Uh, spoiler alert, it's not gonna be 90 kilowatt hours. The EPA publishes the documentation sent in by the automakers for a Certificate of Conformity. Basically, it's a document where the automaker says, hey, here's some numbers on our engine. It meets your EPA requirements. This document for the 2020 Model 3 long range all wheel drive says the battery has a weight of 480 kilograms and it has a density of 150 watt hours per kilogram. Run some quick maths you got a 72 kilowatt hour battery. Although most of the websites that I've looked at give the battery closer to 75 kilowatt hours. I haven't quite nailed down why there's this discrepancy between the documentation sent in by Tesla and what most of the other websites give. I want to chalk it up as a manufacturing tolerance and differences in manufacturing, but I haven't been able to confirm that. Regardless, just when I thought I had the battery capacity figured out, I stumbled upon a site that listed both capacity and usable capacity. Yeah, this rabbit hole goes deeper. The site was evspecifications.com and they list a usable capacity of 75 kilowatt hours with a total capacity of 79.5 kilowatt hours. What's the difference? From what I can find, the usable capacity is how much energy you can use taking your battery from 100% down to zero. That usable capacity is 75 kilowatt hours. Now you might be thinking, Matt, 
What more is there between 100% and 0%? I'll refer you to the idiom of giving 110%. And if we can all do that and give 110%. I'm giving 110%. 110%. 110%. for Teslas, they can actually give 104.5%. Tesla has a built-in small buffer of 4.5% that should not be dependent on, but may be available after your car hits zero. So really when a Tesla hits zero, it's kind of actually at 4.5%. And when Tesla did its range tests, it takes the car from 100% all the way past zero into the point where the car says no mas and cannot move any further. If we look deeper into the documentation Tesla submitted, we will see that they managed to get 79.8 kilowatt hours out of the fully charged battery. And when Tesla gives you the total range in the car, this is the value that they are using for the amount of energy stored in the battery. Okay, so now we're up to a 80 kilowatt hour battery, but the numbers from the EPA that we calculated earlier, they gave us a battery size of 90 kilowatt hours. So how did they get that? Well, after taking the car the whole way down to zero, or should I say negative four and a half, once the battery was fully dead, they tracked how much energy they needed to bring the car back up to 100%. That amount of energy was 89.9 kilowatt hours. You can see the slightly different numbers for each of the long range Model 3s here, and they're all close to 90 kilowatt hours of recharge energy. So now the question is, how do they manage to put 90 kilowatt hours into a car with a 79.5 kilowatt hour battery pack? That answer is charging losses. The battery pack stores DC energy, but the grid provides AC energy. There are some losses with converting alternating current to direct current, and those losses are about 11.5%. In other words, the conversion is 88.5% efficient. All right, that was a lot. So let's recap. The numbers that the EPA show for efficiency can be thought of as a wall-to-wheel efficiency, which means they take into account charging losses from converting AC at the wall to DC at the battery pack. And I guess this is fair because you could say that they do a similar thing for internal combustion vehicles. It's just that hopefully there shouldn't be any leaks from the gas pump to your car. Oh my God, what do I do? <laughs> Nicole, Nicole, you need to put it back in. What do I do? It's not the conversion from AC to DC is about 88.5% efficient using a level two charger. So the 280 watt hours per mile from the wall that the EPA shows is equivalent to a 247.8 watt hours per mile once the energy is in the battery pack. This is the number that your car will display and my lifetime efficiency is actually that exact number, 248 watt hours per mile. And this even includes driving up in the Colorado mountains. Fun to drive up here in the Colorado mountains. Lastly, given the car's usable battery of 75 kilowatt hours, if you calculate that out, that should give the car a range of 303 miles. However, what Tesla does not tell you is there is a small 4.5% buffer that may be available after the car hits 0% battery. This takes the gross battery size up to 78.4 kilowatt hours. Run the numbers again, and this will give us a total range in emergencies to 316 miles. This is close enough to the 322 mile number that's advertised. So that is where the numbers on the EPA's fuel economy website come from. There's a whole other discussion to be had on how the EPA obtains that 280 watt hours per mile number. Yes, it includes charging losses like we've talked about, but it also includes a highway test, a city test, a high speed test, an air conditioning test. I'll link to a video that goes over this in more detail in the video description. Not all of the tests that I just mentioned are even mandatory, and manufacturers are allowed to decrease the total range number given by the EPA for whatever reason they want. Porsche does this to give what they think is a better real world number. Tesla used to do it because their all wheel drive variants were less efficient than their single motor variants. So to not make the 
dual motor models look like a worse car in comparison. They handicapped the rear wheel drive models so that the range differences weren't as drastic, especially with the performance all wheel drive model, which was the least efficient of them all. This was back when the Model 3 dual motor was first coming out and they've since stopped this practice. But if you think this would be an interesting video for me to go into further detail and one that I should make, let me know in the comments below. But thank you if you made it this far. I hope you were able to follow along and that you can now understand where the EPA's numbers are coming from. If anything about this wasn't clear, please let me know in the comments. So I guess the moral of the story is, your mileage may vary. See you in the next video.